I'm Andrew and welcome back to Custom Cards. Today we are taking a look at Dominaria. Specifically, we're going to open up a pack of Dominaria, take a look at the cards inside, and talk about sort of the design that goes into each one. And then at the end, we're going to take inspiration from the cards that we open in this pack to make a card for our Norse themed set. So with that, let's get into it. I have a bunch of Dominaria packs, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to crack one open. Always looking for a good excuse. First up, we have Arcane Flight, which is an aura that gives plus one, plus one in flying for just a blue mana. Generally, auras in limited are, well, very limited in what they can do. Auras tend to not be very good because they come, they bring with them the possibility of getting two for one. That is, you put this on a creature and then your creature gets killed and now you've lost both the creature and your aura for the price of one removal spell. However, this one had a very good combo in the set, which was Cold Water Snapper. You put this on a big hexproof creature and now it's a big hexproof flying creature and uh, if the opponent can't block it, they're just going to be in a world of trouble. Uh, next up, we have Gitu Chronicler, which is a 1-3 wizard for 2. Um, you can kick it for 4 mana so that when it enters the battlefield, you get to return an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. This is excellent for any spells deck. Even just the 1-3 for 2 body was fine. You have Banalish Honor Guard, which... Um, it's just a 2-2 two, two for 2, which white normally gets, but it also gains 1 power for each legend you control. Of course, Legendary was a theme in Dominaria. This uh, had the, the ability to punch above its weight class. Dredge Sentinel is probably one of the worst commons in the set. A 2-1 for 3 is bad stats, and paying 3 to give it indestructible and tap it was just not going to do very much. I think I did see one game where these guys were pretty scary. My opponent was going really wide, and I couldn't deal with all the creatures. And um, It didn't matter if I blocked this guy, because it would just regenerate. I guess you could make a deck where it was okay. Mammoth Spider, um, just a 3-5 reach creature for 5. A solid creature. You always need a, a reach creature at common. This is a good one because uh, it's so big that it's going to be hard for your opponent's creatures to get through it. Next up we have Academy Drake, another kicker card. Um, now the kicker creatures that can gain plus one plus one counters are interesting because they can fulfill the role of both a low drop and a high drop in your deck. So a 2-2 for three flyer tends to be decent. Um, not great, not bad, just decent. Uh, but the ability to also play this as a 4-4 four, four flyer for 7, uh, well, it, it's effectively taking up two slots in your deck. If you need a small creature, it's a small creature. And if you need a big creature, well, it can do that too. This is just a very solid, solid card that could uh, be good in any blue deck. Demonic Vigor um, sort of suffers from the same problem as Arcane Flight, which is that it is an aura. However, when a gentic creature dies, return that card to its owner's hand. So this works well with Luris. I guess they're not in standard at the same time, and Luris already has Kaya's Ghost Form, which is effectively the same thing. Um, Power Stone Shard, which is a ramp artifact. You can pay three to add one colorless for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. So obviously the goal of this is to get a full play set and, uh, and start going off. This is more of a constructed card though. You know, if you need to ramp, it could be fine and limited. Uh, here we have our first premium common, which is Shiv and Fire. It's just a two damage to a creature for, for one mana. If you kick it, it can deal four damage instead. It's very good. I would take these early and often. Call the Cavalry is a sorcery that creates two 2-2 two, two White Knight creature tokens. That's a perfectly serviceable card. There, it's nothing to write home about. Um, it did work well in the Black White Go Wide deck, so that's pretty cool. Ooh, we're on to the uncommons. We have Time of Ice. Okay, so it's a saga. When it enters and on the second chapter, um, you get to tap target creature an opponent controls and it doesn't untap for as long as you control Time of Ice. Then the third chapter is return all tapped creatures to their owner's hands. So this is actually card disadvantage because you're not actually, you're spending a card to not actually gain any lasting benefit, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad card. It just means it is card disadvantage. This type of effect Frost Breath effects, things that tap down and or bounce creatures, are called tempo effects, and they are most effective in a deck that is looking to close the game early. So you get out a couple creatures. They don't even have to be good creatures. They just have to have a couple or three power. Then if you tap and bounce all of your creatures' blockers and keep hitting them every turn, they may not, just not be able to recover. So this was for a uh, tempo strategy. Juggernaut, 5-3 for 4. Attacks each combat if able, but can't be blocked by walls. This used to be one of the most powerful creatures in Magic. We've sort of seen the power level balance out, so instants and sorceries are not the most powerful thing, and it's sort of all even playing field. Um, Juggernaut is at least very cool, um, and it did have some synergies with artifact stuff in the set. So this was a fine inclusion in Dominaria Limited, um, depending on your deck. And our rare... Hold on. 
Interesting. So we have 10 commons here, two uncommons. Didn't miss any. And then our rare. So we're missing an uncommon. Um, but anyhow, for the rare, we have Mishra's Self-Replicator. It's a 2-2 for 5, which is a terrible rate. But whenever you cast a historic spell, that is, artifacts, legendaries, or sagas, you can pay 1 to create a token that's a copy of Mishra's Self-Replicator. And of course, that copy also has this ability, which means that uh, it can get out of control really quickly, and suddenly you're just making as many 2-2s as you have mana, which is incredible. I sadly only ever found this, like, pack 3, when it was far too late for me to build around it, but... This is a really cool card, uh, and I enjoyed it. Um, interesting. So we do have our uh, our third come, and it was just hidden behind the rare. Um, so we have Adelis, the Cinder Wind, 2-2 two, two, Flying Haste, Wizard for three. Perfect in the wizard theme. It basically gives prowess to all of your wizards, which is wonderful. That tempo deck I was talking about before. Time of Ice goes perfectly in this deck. You play some wizards, you play Adelis, and then all of your tempo effects, your bounce, your frost breath is not only going to remove your opponent's creatures, but it's also going to make all of your creatures bigger. So this guy was really hard to beat. Um, then we've got a Swamp and a Cleric token, looking nice there. And that's our Dominaria pack. Okay, I'm feeling inspired by the tempo cards we saw in this pack, so let's make a build around uncommon for a tempo deck. Let's have the card allow you to bounce any creature that you would target with a spell. This is definitely a blue effect, and we could put that on an enchantment, but that doesn't feel very tempo. Tempo wants creatures with some oomph, so let's make this a 3-2 creature, and 5 mana seems reasonable here. And there you have it, one build around uncommon for a tempo deck. Notably, it works well with the blue-red theme, which is Bounce Pillage. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and tell us in the comments what videos you'd like to see in the future. We'll be back next Thursday.